Okay, hi everyone, it's Kate from Inside Out Wellness. So here we are into week four of lockdown in uh, North Wales. So hope you're all kind of adjusting to your new normals and um, whatever they look like. Um, today's lockdown diary is with Sam. I'm really excited to see her, not seeing her in a while. Sam is the with woman therapist at uh, the centre um, and she specialises in fertility and women's health massage. And she's also got a day job as a midwife, so a very, very busy lady at the moment. How are you doing, lovely? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Um... I am just enjoying the weather and I'm really grateful that you have decided to do this early on in the day so that it means that I've got up, put my face on, done my hair. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. I've put on my my with woman therapies t-shirt, hashtag love your womb, <laughs> it says here. <laughs> I really really miss wearing my t-shirt and and you know come in and massaging uh, inside out wellness so I thought that I would put this on and also I just didn't know what else to wear so oh, you always look <laughs> amazing Sam <laughs> oh thank you I think I'm a little bit wonky sorry everyone if I'm a bit wonky <laughs> don't look wonky um yeah thanks so yeah I'm just enjoying it i'm glad that the sun's shining again i'm really pleased for the weather during this lockdown it's just really nice to have the outdoor space to you know spread out into as well i'm really lucky i've got a nice little garden yeah. um my husband is enjoying spending time out there in the garden and it's a bit difficult because my nearly one-year-old is um, wanting to eat everything. Well, he always has done. <laughs> off the floor. So it's quite difficult. Um, you know, like he wants to eat the stones that are around the patio and the grass. Oh, no. and... <laughs> God. So, um, yeah. And we tell him, we say no. He does a lot of things that we say no to. We go, no, no, no. And he'll go. <laughs> he's, he's got the finger yeah no, he loves it we're like no and he'll go <laughs> must be nice for phil to have a bit of a break at the moment because he's a teacher isn't he yeah so actually phil is having a really nice break hmm. he is doing work at home and he does go in only for um you know once or once a week or once every two weeks actually yeah. just for the kids of the key workers yeah his school is gone from 600 in his primary school it's a big primary school yeah. and i think they're having like six oh, that gosh. are going yeah if not so it's um you know it's quite different and his his stress levels i can tell have just come straight down yeah um I must admit the first week was quite difficult for us because we couldn't escape from things so yeah. issues came to the surface and I'm really grateful for those um, because we've had a few deep and meaningful conversations that we wouldn't have ever had or maybe yeah. would have had them in years to come and because you can't run away from anything mm. it meant that we were able to, you know, come back together again a lot sooner and work yeah. out issues we've had. So I'm sure that there are a lot of people though that are really struggling. Um, my mum and my stepdad are both police officers yeah. and they have um, both said how, you know, domestic abuse incidents have gone through the roof because you can't, you can't get out of any situations and what once wasn't there has started to appear. Yeah. Um, and that's really scary. However, I can't worry about that because you know I, I do like to think that I only want to worry about things I can change personally. And that's out of my remit, you know. So although I'm really worried, you know, when I do think about it, I try not to get caught up in worry too much because it's not healthy is it no no I mean I, I do feel for all of the key workers out there my sister's a police officer as well and some of the things that she's talking about is really quite heartbreaking um but you know everyone at the moment has got a situation to deal with some are greater than others 
Um, but everyone's got their situation, haven't they? Um, yeah. You're a midwife. I mean, you're, 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 you're working, aren't you? I mean, I know you're on holiday at the moment, but you're, you're working as normal. You're working your normal hours. And how are you finding that? It's difficult when... So I was in uh, isolation for two weeks mm. before everyone went into lockdown because I, it was when Boris Johnson was still, you know, on the TV with, yeah. um, you know, behind his, behind his, what do you call it? His podium. I want to say, yeah. <laughs> 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 behind the podium. And, you know, when he said, if somebody in your house has got a cough, then you all need to isolate. And I took that really, really seriously. And Phil did as well. So we all were in lockdown before anyone else was officially in lockdown. Yeah. And um, so for two weeks, I was working from home. So I felt quite in a bubble, felt very protected. And then after the two weeks was over, I had to go into the community because I'm a community midwife. And do the clinics in the community with the full PPE. Yeah. Um, so in two weeks, it massively changed, and I felt very anxious. In fact, I called the community midwife manager, and um, just to to have a chat. And I ended up crying because I was actually really scared about just it's just change, isn't it? It was change and worry. Um, I had a small glimpse of how people might feel with agoraphobia, mm. you know, that being scared to go outside yeah. because I hadn't gone out at all, yeah. apart from a little bit of a walk each day. Yeah. So to think about then going, um, you know, putting a mask on, gown on, gloves, um, I felt like there was a, a physical and a mental barrier there between the women that were pregnant they were, I could tell they were scared looking at me. They're getting used to it now. Yeah. I think. Um, and everyone's getting used to the situation, but at first it was really, really hard. Um, but the masks aren't easy to, to wear. No. And once they're on, they're on, um, you're, they're either on or off to work. So, and you know, we've got shortages. So I've been wearing it all day so that I've not been wasting them. Um, so you are, you're breathing in your own carbon dioxide, I think. So you're yawning more and I think my brain doesn't work as well when I'm wearing it. And yeah, it is, it's hard work, but um, the women are doing so well. They are honestly, they're very forgiving and very helpful and, mm. and kind, um, which is really, is really nice because it's scary for all of us and you know the Countess of Chester have been amazing the staff have all come together they're doing TikTok videos <laughs> and we're doing you know like the classes online via Zoom and you know, they're just really increasing technology and everyone's just working so hard and I'm very proud. Oh that's that's brilliant the sense of community has just been amazing it's just yeah. come through, hasn't it, through social media, through the news and stuff. And I think the vast majority of people are pulling together. I mean, obviously, you always get people who don't, but the majority are. And I, th I think that's, I really hope that once this is over, that that sense of community and cohesion carries forward. Yeah, I must admit, it's changed again. How do you feel about when lockdown is lifted or we start to get back to normal how do you feel about that um obviously i'm looking forward to whatever the new normal is going to be um i really hope that the lessons that we've all learned individually and collectively that we take forward and we don't forget about them um mm. and like some of the decisions that well just speaking personally that i've made that i've decided i'm going to take forward that i don't forget about because I really feel that this has been a very important time for me and for other people in making some really important decisions about where I want to go and what the sort of person I want to be. And I really want to be yeah. mindful of that in the future. Um, yeah. I'm not scared of coming out of lockdown. I mean, I, I, 
I have seen it myself where people are getting a bit agoraphobic um, and mm. I think the impact of this situation is going to go on for a very long time I think because once we come out of situations people are going to have to adjust and people adjust in different ways um, yeah. but yeah um, what about you? I've just had an idea as you were saying that wouldn't it be great if we all wrote down what we want to take forward um you know like um you bury things in a capsule i think that oh, we should yeah. do this anyway i need yeah. to do this with louise um you know or photos or a letter to our future self but yeah. it would be good to do something that is very visual to put yeah. it up on the fridge maybe yeah of these are my lockdown promises um oh, going forward yeah 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 i know yeah. <laughs> We'll share them. Let's let's do it. We'll share it and you know, maybe other people will be happy to share theirs. That's a great idea. I love it. Yeah. See, it's the creativity that's coming out. It's amazing. It is. I have become a lot more creative. Um using watercolour paints. I bought a um Bible that you can colour in. Mm -hmm. Um and it's just really uplifting me and it's just creative ways, isn't it, of um, yeah. spending your time without yeah. watching the TV all the time Absolutely. or you know, getting too stuck in your thoughts, really. Yeah, I've never um, baked so much, I've got to be honest. I've, I've, I'm, yeah. Sarah and I are going through her kiddies' cookbook, page by page, and we've had some dread, dreadful outcomes. <laughs> And we've had some some brilliant ones as well. But do you know what? It's been fun. It's been really fun doing something with her. She's only five, like Eloise is, and you know it's such a fun age, and they're full of joy yeah. and being in the moment, yeah. aren't they? So I think that really yeah. helps me. I don't know about you, but it really helps me be grounded yeah. and in the moment. So yeah, I'm really really grateful for Eloise. She is like a mini me as well. She's dead funny. Um, <laughs> And you know, when you look over and you think, oh, she's just copying me. And yeah. I just think that like, she's just lovely. She's yeah. such a joy. She's got a wicked sense of humor as well. So we're laughing a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it is. I'm really, really grateful for, for that as well. But I feel a little bit worried about the NHS after lockdown. So my best friend is a nurse and she is currently working in a green ward so i'm really pleased because honestly if anything happened to my loo then i don't know what i would do <laughs> but she's working on a green ward so that means that anyone that's suspected of coronavirus or um you know they're just moved out of that ward it's a completely you know coronavirus free ward and she's saying that actually there's quite a lot of staff because they've cancelled the annual leave for nurses. So there's a quite a lot of staff and there's not very many um, operations going on unless they're really, really necessary. So I'm worried about the NHS for mm. afterwards. And I'm worried that all of the, you know, once lockdown is lifted, no one's going to think about the NHS. Mm. I know that we've been doing a lot of clapping and, you know, all of the rainbows that we're painting, but I think we're going to need those more. Afterwards. Not more as well as yeah. the yeah. afterwards and I think that's something to really think about um mm. because all of the the um things that have been cancelled we've got a massive backlog now yeah I've had something that's been cancelled and I've yeah. been waiting for it since I was pregnant and now yeah. Owen is one yeah and it's been cancelled and I'm just a little bit you know it's yeah, it was just I know what you mean. The NHS is for life, isn't it? It's not. It's not just for COVID, is it? It you know it is. It's the, the here and now massive, massive issue that they need to deal with. But like you say, people's health concerns don't begin and end at COVID. So yeah, mm. yeah. Fingers crossed. Hey, that it does. It does okay. survive and thrive. Even um, that they come out of this fitter and stronger. Know. So yeah, well, yeah what's, um, really I'm really interested, is. Sam, in what your your kind of your biggest learning has been from this experience. Um, my biggest learning has been that actually, I think that we're just so good as human beings at adapting. Yeah. Um, 
and just we are we're very flexible aren't we actually yeah um so we're just learning new things the nhs is learning a lot of technology and yeah that's yeah it's we are really yeah we're very flexible aren't we i think that's yeah. that's that's what's defining us individually and collectively i think it's inspiring yeah. Yeah, me too. And I actually really enjoy taking a moment and thinking, I'm living in history. Yeah. And I could feel it straight away. Um, you know, this is gonna be in textbooks mm. this moment. And you know, my daughter's being five and living through it. I'm feeling a bit emotional actually. <laughs> oh. Um but yeah, it's it's a big thing and I don't it's a bit overwhelming really isn't it when you think about how big it actually is and we are making history right yeah. now it's yeah it's weird yeah the queen really was weird. right in her speech wasn't she <laughs> we, um, are, we will be talking about the queen. <laughs> oh, <queening. laughs> I was stopping. when she said we'll meet together i thought oh great i know oh, i went at that bit I, I went yeah i know what a wonderful oh, woman what? yeah I, know. <laughs> I love you. so what so anyway. sam what, final few thoughts then obviously you're missing your business not obviously you're, you're a midwife so you, you're, you're doing that but in terms of your your business as advertised by your t-shirt your t there you know i bet you can't wait to get back in the saddle can you with that i know i really can't wait and i was a little bit worried about the the ladies oh Eloise is uh, wanting to come in <laughs> one, one minute one minute I was a little bit worried about women not maybe wanting to get pregnant um but then I realized that actually it's my my business isn't all about fertility it's yeah. about helping women to feel the best that they can um and I think that that's good I think ladies are going to want to come in for not just any period problems just to feel grounded yeah. and that's what most ladies feel after they've had the massage so i yeah i'm really looking forward to just helping ground everyone to feel happy within themselves again and yeah so i'm trying not to focus too much on the fertility because i'm i'm unsure whether people will want to actually be getting pregnant during this these uncertain times so yeah I'm there for the ladies that want to get pregnant and for those that just need grounding healing womb healing menopause. whatever menopause whatever doesn't stop for anything does it you know, then, so. <laughs> well. yeah. you know so, just yeah. before we go my mum can't have HRT because she had womb cancer and she has been struggling with hot sweats and just before we finished, closed our doors at Inside Out Wellness, she came for a massage and we only did one because of all of this mm. social distancing thing. And she now hardly wakes up at night because of these hot flushes, even now. Wow. It, wow. It, That's one amazing. Massage. How wow. awesome is that? Pat I've got to go. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> and we put in her face up against the window pane oh. doing this with I'm working from home, Sam. Working from home. <laughs> it's, listen, lovely. It's been just gorgeous to see your beautiful face, and uh, can't wait to Thank see you, you soon. All right, bye. Bye. bye.